and welcome back to Politics and Land in Hawaii with Dennis Isaki on Think Tech Hawaii. Today we'll be speaking with Dee Morikawa, a representative in the State House from the west side of Kauai. The District 16 includes Nihau, Lehua Island, Koloa, and Waimea. I thought only birds lived on uh, Lehua Island. Anyway, she's the State House Majority Floor Leader. It serves on the following House Committees, Consumer Protection and Commerce, Corrections, Military and Veterans, Legislative Management, and Water and Land, very important committees. Dee, thank you for joining us today. Thank please, you, Dennis. Please tell us a little about yourself and your role in the state legislature. Sure, Dennis. I ran for office in, the, oh gosh, 12 years ago. I had to resign from my position in the County of Kauai Parks and Recreation Department. It's a tough decision, but you know, back then it was always me wondering um, how is it that the county gets money for their projects? Because I would do the CIP budget and always put numbers there, but never understand where the money would come from. So I have that county experience there. But um, I, I have served on many committees throughout my career. I've been on the finance committee. I have chaired the human services committee. And today um, I am now the majority floor leader and have been since 2017. And it's a very critical role because it's part of leadership and we get, I get to hear a lot of the issues and, you know, they look to me for input on certain things. And I think for me, that is where I fit in very well. Okay. And speaking about the majority floor leader, what uh, do you have a say in which bills uh, gets uh, discussed? I can. I mean, we, we, we pretty much discuss the package that we want to try to do each session. Um, I can get input into just about any committee because, as you know, in the legislature, the Speaker of the House is the top, the Vice Speaker is number two, then the majority floor leader and myself. So we are like the top four in leadership. Um, yeah, I mean, if I see problems, I can go directly to the speaker and we can discuss them. Or if there's something that we want to try to promote, you know, I, I can do that also. But my, my main role is to control things on the floor, kind of watch the votes that come in and make sure um, I get the journal that's done every day correctly done by the end of session. Yeah, thanks. Um... Checking the records it really brought up the bacon for uh, the west side and the rest of the island of Kauai. Um, you want to tell us a little bit about some of the CIP projects? Sure. I think as a whole, because we have um, Senate President Kochi, um, myself, and Representative Nakamura and Tokioka, um, who Rep Tokioka is, has been a very long time representative. So, you know, we have done very well as far as projects for Kauai is concerned. Um, for Nadine's district, especially when the flood occurred, we were able to, with the help of um, our finance chair, Sylvia Luke at the time, we were able to get the $100 million to help Kauai get through that. And, you know, that's, that's huge. But outside of that, we have brought home a lot of money you know, Kauai High School gym is, is being constructed now. The Waimea High School gym is an, the project that's been, there's money uh, for that, $27 million. It's just a matter of getting the plan design and construction finally going. Um, when I first started, I thought what was really huge was the drag strip down in uh, Mana. My friend Peter Ishibashi way back then, I, I just mentioned to him, how much you think would we would need to make that drag strip top notch. And he said, oh, probably a million dollars. And I put I put the ask in and I was very surprised that we got it. So we got more funding for that. And today it is what it is, a place that the West Side people really enjoy. But on top of that, the boat harbors have gotten really good funding. They look real good today. Polehale, Koke, our schools, uh, Waimea Canyon Middle School just got their um, outdoor, their covered play court, which is also like a gym, similar to the other middle schools in Kauai. That was huge. So we look forward to in the future, our Hanapepe Stadium, getting a really nice facility. 
with the ticket booth and restrooms and the food booth all attached to one facility. That should be something very exciting. Yeah, thanks. Uh, our friend uh, Tony Ritchie uh, appreciates that drag strap. <laughs> and I understand there's uh, a lot of people go to attend that, keep people off the streets also. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Um, uh, some, some of the other, you know, topics uh, I want to discuss, uh, and of course, housing, and a lot of them is tied into infrastructure, including the sewer. Uh, can anything? Can the legislature do anything about that, or is it strictly well, housing? Yeah, the legislature has helped. Um, the water department get a lot of CIP funding for well improvements and maintenance and all of that. And um, as long as they have a plan and they come to see us, it's possible that we can help and we have help in that um, area. But nothing has ever been said about the sewer system. And that's my biggest concern because where I live in Waimea, in 1980, mid 1980s, when we built our house, we had to hook up to the sewer. And after that, there was nothing talked about future expansion into the sewer system. And so I think, you know, as administrations change, their priorities change, but nobody has ever talked about expanding the sewage. And I think now with the mandates on getting rid of cesspools and people having to put in septic systems, it's just a real burden on homeowners. I think we really need to seriously sit down and talk about how we're gonna be able to fund sewer expansion, meaning more sewage treatment plants, more lines into more housing areas, more development areas. And then we can talk about expanding our housing inventory. Yeah, I think that's very important. Um, we got West Side, Kekaha area, it's all low lying, you know, the, the water tables up high. Uh, I'm sure that's cess the old cesspool especially just Going into the water system, um, right? And if you get, even if you got to put a septic system, uh, that's going to cost thirty-five thousand something add to the cost of a house. So yes, and and I'm really worried about Kale Hill and Koloa because by right, those two towns need to have their own sewage treatment plant, whether it be county or whether it be private partner public profit partnership. It has to be talked about now you know people don't realize that when they try to do any improvement on their home or if they want to sell their homes they cannot do anything unless they show that they have a septic system in and like you said it's very costly yeah it, um yeah i've been i've been saying the same thing even uh hawaiian homeland they, they're uh, and on the whole there's no system and they get a lot of land over there they got five-year exemptions, you know, they could build a septic, but the exemption is for five years. What good will that do yeah. after you build a house? And it's on those, yeah. somebody's got to put it. So I think, you know, stuff like that, you meant, you're right, got to be addressed. Um, it's a big part of the housing. Um, what about other aspects of uh, housing in general? The county, I mean, the state talk about yeah, uh, the state housing. has the state has dedicated a lot of funding towards housing projects if we have a project there. And fortunately for us, especially on the west side, is we have that LALA project that um, the county is spearheading, uh, Lima Ola, right. and then the Habitat for Humanities. Um, they've been doing a great job in getting yes. homes, and those are truly affordable. And then here in Waimea, uh, Habitat will put, be putting in more homes and apartments. So they are doing really well on my side of the island. That really helps our school population yeah. for me, I think. Because yeah. at one, we, were, we had such a low uh, population in our high school that, oh, it was pretty sad. But now the kids are, are starting to come back. And we have great schools here. Yeah, get, you know, that, uh, that's what... Um... Habitat for Humanity is doing a great job, as you mentioned. But uh, you know they need the infrastructure, um, and that's and, where we we've helped them. The state has helped them with um, grants right. to do that. Yeah, yeah, like uh, tax credits and stuff. 
uh, for for some developers. Uh, mm -hmm. But you know, I always say you know, you gotta help the the whole middle class, working class need needs help too. Uh, I don't know. They might be uh, addressing eighty percent of the median income or something, and everybody talking about affordable housing, but it, to me, it's just a word, affordable. You know. Just calling it yeah. affordable, you know, because it's in a so many percent of you know right. median income, it doesn't necessarily make it affordable for everybody. Um, so that that uh, housing is a big issue. Then uh, coming to the west side, Kika, another big problem is the the landfill, solid waste. What can you tell us about that? Yeah, you know, even I feel guilty when I throw things in my trash that I know are not going to be recycled. Like, you know, those bottles that we use, not the, the metal bottles, mm -hmm. hyd hydro flask. Yeah. After a while, you have to dump it and you know it's going to go in the landfill and it's going to stay there forever. Um, there, there's got to be, in today's eight, day and age, we have to have some type of something that will incinerate cleanly incinerate our trash like h power and i always get the same answer no we don't generate enough trash on Kauai, but I, I just i have a hard time believing that there's got to be a way we can get rid of it and still use whatever um we power whatever power we can generate from doing that it has to be a way but that has i i just can't see us building another mountain somewhere else and who knows the consequence of what that pollution is going to do to our groundwater you know that's that's a scary thing to think about but of course it's the county again right, right. yeah they're behind the eight ball on that on the um landfill relocation if yeah. go past over there look at that mountain and it's getting getting higher and higher um you know i don't think we're any closer to getting a new site right now even on oahu they they you know only recently got the approval. They've been operating the women Gulch for a long time, you know, extending past their permits. Uh, yeah, it's a big issue. It Wait, is, it yeah. is. So being uh, that, I think huh? we're not doing a good job of recycling either, because I think the bottle, the beverage uh, recycling program uh, is uh, going down. It's not doing what it's supposed to do. I tried to introduce legislation to make it more of a county issue. So the county would get the benefit of all of that money and dish it out to whoever recycles, but they didn't want it. They thought it was too much of a responsibility. But under the Department of Health right now, there's, there's a lot of not so good things that might be happening to it. I've seen the audits and they don't look too good. So people, instead of taking it to wherever to redeem, they just throw it in the trash. Yeah, so it's, um, I mean, but this still got to pay up front. So, I mean, you're getting a little bit money, but it just you know, doesn't stop the trash problem. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. okay, um, yeah, it's, I mean, we got that problem we got to work on. So how do you see the you know, past couple of years pandemic issue affecting everybody's lives and and your your job in the legislature. Well, yeah, I think the pandemic has taught us a lot about uh, cleanliness and how we need to really be aware that it's not just COVID that we're being affected by. It's a whole bunch of new things that are popping up that our bodies get infected with. And I think um, you know, we go back to long ago where they forced vaccinations on us and, and what have you, but it seemed to have worked. And now that there's more of a freedom of choice, we're finding out that these things will affect us more. But COVID as a whole has taught us that um, this is serious. We can shut down everything in our lives until we can get a handle on whatever it is that's affecting us at the time. But businesses were hurting. Um, well, the good thing about it is that now we can start fresh again and figure out how we can um, make more policy to deal with uh, overcrowding, right? Tourism. Um, I think that's 
that's a big problem for us right now is how do we limit capacity or how do we, we um, make visitors pay for their impacts on our infrastructure and, and on our natural resources. But yeah, COVID's taught us a lot. Yeah, I, I don't think we're out of it yet. You know, a lot of our friends are still getting uh, COVID either to travel or to, you know, just uh, coming into contact with people, whether they know it or not. Uh, and, you know, long ago when we were catching viruses, we, we didn't never took it seriously until COVID hit. Yeah, and then right. we were dying, then we realized, wow. The word virus can be something serious. Before, I just thought, okay, it's a cold, a virus. I just got to eat chicken soup, right? Yeah. Not, oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah <laughs> Not, we, we all had, you know. <laughs> but now, you know, you take it a little bit more serious. Um, and uh, some other countries take it more serious than others. And, Tell and me you, about I'm trying to go to Japan tomorrow. And man, is it hard. You have to get into this computer thingy on your phone like we used to do with safe travel but theirs is more complicated and they are strict so i'm just hoping and praying that everything will be okay when i land tomorrow so did they just open up travel Not really. no you still have to get your visa which you never needed before you have to get your pre-test you have to upload it you have to have your vaccinations up to date which means at least three and then you have to make sure everything's in place when you land there. You're, but, you're, <laughs> but there's not, no, quar no quarantine though. Uh, if you don't have your papers in place, you may have to quarantine. Yeah, I, I did travel not to Japan, but during the midst of uh, the pandemic, if you will. And they said, you gotta have your test within 72 hours. I did just and try to time it. But I, came, I arrived at uh, Lihui. I didn't have the test results. They said, you got to quarantine. But just just that, you know, like, I got it right after, you know, the result negative. They said, sorry, you're going to return with it. So you got to quarantine. I go, it's not. So I, <laughs> I went on Lulu. Yeah. No, you would think if you can test and test yeah. and you're OK, you're yeah, OK. Yeah. 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 But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> so I, I was negative. So I went home, like came back with it, and he said, "Okay, now you're okay." <laughs> it's, it's, sometimes the rules kind of crazy. Yeah. Yeah. Gosh. Yeah, and um, on the economy, a lot of businesses they cannot find workers now. So, you, you got any uh, ideas on that? Why? Why can't they? restaurants not opening uh, the hours that they used to because they said they cannot find workers. What oh, do you think of that? Yeah. I have a great example of that. Look at Ishihara Market. The market yeah. in the district who, that has been like so super busy and now they, they're shut down. Half, they close early in the afternoon. They can't find workers. You know, I'm not sure what is going on here because you no longer qualify for unemployment if you're not working. So I'm assuming that like me and my husband, we were baby boomers. During the pandemic, we all retired and we don't need to work, right? And so that was the workforce that left like a huge amount of vacancies in state and county government also. And I don't think that the younger um, workforce can do those jobs, just step in and do the jobs. That could be one of the reasons. I mean, we, we raise the minimal wage, so that's not the issue. Yeah. People, employees are, employers are paying more than the minimum wage just because yeah. they need workers. I think the younger generation just has found a better way to work from home. Yeah, I've, I've heard that uh, some people pay 30 bucks an hour for dishwashers just to get it done. Um, yeah. And even at Mark's base, they every close uh, they don't open like five hours now due to lack of. So I'm trying to get a handle on that. that employees, I don't know. You might be right on that generational thing. Like I know some people who haven't come out of high school. That you know they don't want to work. I don't know. Is that 
they getting well, money somewhere or? Like I said, their parents have retired. <laughs> <laughs> their parents or their grandparents or something yeah exactly I and mean, so now maybe maybe they're t having to take care of their older grandparents their child grandchildren you know who knows um i i see a lot of my uh people similar to my age who are grandparents they fly to oahu to go watch their grandchildren yeah, yeah i mean <laughs> like you said you raise the minimum wage like, you know they get, you know, not bad pay, you know. Yeah. Uh, what what did we start off working for? Dollar something an hour? Dollar eighty for yeah. me. Yeah. <laughs> I, yeah, I, you know, I worked, you know, dollar sixty. Um after college I made for an engineering company for four dollars and five cents an hour after college. Yeah. And uh I don't know, you tell the guys working <laughs> they won't work for, you know. What is the minimum wage now? And it'll go up to what, 18 bucks? Yeah. Soon? Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, that's a tough one to uh, crack. Why a lot of um, stores are going into self service type um, because they can't get the people to uh, check you out anymore. So you check yourself out now. But that's, uh, that's a new way. Um, okay. Uh, the, you mentioned the um, the tourism and you know how how, how that could, we can uh, put that into the system you know to improve the island living. Is that with the tourism more tax or what? Well, the, we're ta we were talking about what's called the green fee, where you would charge everyone landing a, a fee, but you know of course that didn't work because. You, know, you 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 want to charge the fee for the use of that specific facility. You don't want to do a flat fee for everybody to pay. It's really not fair. Um, we still have to work out something. That's why parking is is being talked about. If you want to go visit Koke or Hyena, uh, you have to pay for that parking, make pre arrangements, right? And that that kind of helps that overcrowding. Um, Kauai has done a really good job because they cracked down on vacation rentals. So there are not that many places available and we have limited cars now, although Turo has kind of taken off and um, there's a lot of business there, which is, makes another problem with parking at the airport, et cetera. But that's something that now we need to address at next session again. But Maui is suffering because they have not cracked down on vacation rentals. They keep on expanding their hotels and, and vacations and be what have you. And they're like to the max. They, they are bad at the airport. And you've seen a lot of those Facebook posts about the long lines at the airport. But they can't get a handle <clears throat> on that. So I think Kauai, we can still control it. But we, we have our issues. Yeah, it's so yeah, I've seen the pictures of the TSA line on Maui. Yeah, it, it's pretty bad on Kauai, like you mentioned, the tour. I think they're parking the cars by uh, Walmart now on yes. the side of Maui. Yeah. So cracking down because they're all parking at the airport. Hey, that's uh, why people don't have to work now because they have jobs like that. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's yeah, that's one of the things. Uh, yeah, another thing we got, uh, what is six hundred million dollars to DHHL? So you see, where do you see them going? Yeah, that's huge. I mean, yeah. I, I had a notice that they're starting the expansion up in Hanapepe, right? Wine home. So that's that's big. I can see where where that's going to start, and I I can see more things happening next year after. Yeah. Especially after election, after the new administration kicks in. Yeah, I, I think, you know, over there, there's, uh, they can tie it to a sewer, but on the whole yeah. side, like I mentioned, there's no sewer plant, so it's, you know, it's a big, big thing. They got other things, a lot of things with agriculture, too. Um, yes. Kind of do, yeah. So, um, so it's good. They, uh, it's come a long way. Is yeah. that, uh, is that part of a settlement that, you know, they've been talking about for a while? Also, the Kalima settlement was a different um, funding. Oh. I think 
was kind of a huge settlement that they had to pay out for all of those um, beneficiaries that were on the list and didn't get the benefit of it. So that's, yeah, that's a huge accomplishment that has never been addressed in many, many years. So, you know, that's, I really, not to play politics here, but Sylvia Luke was huge on these decisions. Oh yeah. And she just wanted to make sure that all of these things got done before she she left. I knew she knew she was leaving. Oh, yeah. Darn. <laughs> yeah. But so now we can start fresh yeah. next session. If the economy keeps keeps on the way it is, I mean, God, I, our taxes have come in so high. I don't know why. From last year, late last year, transient accommodation taxes rose four hundred percent plus. Corporate taxes went up double digits. So you know, that's why we're, we were able to fund all of these things. I mean, every, I believe just about every grant and aid application that came in got theirs last, last session, which is unheard of. So mm. that's one good thing about the economy coming back, this uh. or this, what have you. So we have to be able to balance. We want them to come and spend, but we, you know, we're not comfortable with having to deal with the traffic and, and all of that stuff, but somehow we need to find that balance. Yeah, great. Um, that's good. Another thing uh, we have is a criminal justice reform. It comes under one of the committees you serve on. Uh, I think was that because of the pandemic, they released a lot of... It, it, yeah, we were talking about that before the pandemic, but during the pandemic, it was something that they were trying to push more so instead of having people stay in and they were getting sick. And uh, But, you know, when you think about it, there's two sides of that story, too. I know I signed on to a bill that um, thinking early release uh, was a great thing, but when you really think deep about it, perhaps it's not. But, you know, I, I have a, a Hanai little girl. She's not little anymore, but I took her in because her mom was incarcerated and her dad had passed away. So I understand what her mom went through. And she, you know, she was able to come out early because she's, she can say that she's living with me now. And she is, and she's reunited with her daughter, but I still have to provide her with a place to stay because otherwise she cannot make it out there on her own. And that's why we invested a lot of money to, to do this for women that, left prison to make sure that they would be able to survive outside and still be reunited with their children and prosper. So, you know, that that's the whole reason why we wanted to allow these people to come out earlier. Yeah, well, so it it's, goes beyond just, you know, let, opening the door and letting them out then. Yeah. Um, okay, we... we and this, this uh, election, were you uh, running unopposed this election? Yeah, for primary, we were all unopposed <clears throat> on Kauai, but we do have opposition in the general. Oh. Uh, yeah, okay. so we still, we're still not home free, but we, we continue to work. Like I said, tomorrow I'll be going with um, a contingent of, uh, with the governor. We're going to sign a sister state relationship with Yamaguchi Prefecture. So we still have to do the work that we're um, elected to do. Yeah. We never right. Do okay, talking about the election, uh, maybe campaign reform or something. We see, well, one, this was a really dirty campaign and a lot of things uh, hit the fan on bribery scandals and all that. Uh, what what do you say about those? Well, like Representative Cullen was my classmate. He and I got elected the same year, and it was sad to hear what happened. Um, but you know, I I can't imagine what how a politician goes down that road. I mean, if you're truly doing it for the right reason, you wouldn't have to do that kind of stuff. And for me, I feel like I'm doing this for the people. It's not for myself. I don't need to be here, but I'm here because when I get a CIP um, funding for a big project in my district, I feel really good. That's what makes me feel good. 
I don't need anything else. I mean, if people donate to my campaign, thank you. It's probably because you like what I'm doing and that's part of my job evaluation. But yeah, we at the legislature are trying to develop policy for next year. What, what do we need to do to um, make sure that we can watch that these things do not happen? whether it be campaign spending type policy, ethics polish policies, but we're waiting for that commission to come down with recommendations at the end of the year. Um, fundraisers are a big deal. We've already put into law that we cannot have fundraisers during the session. So that, that's a small beginning. We get criticized, but we are gonna try to do something. We don't want this. We, we wanna make sure that we're there for the right reasons and the right reason is to help the people of Hawaii. Yeah, thanks, Dee. Um, unfortunately, we're out of time. It went so fast. Um, any last words? I think that I said it right there. <laughs> yeah, okay. I have to yeah. be there for the right reason and that yeah. is to help the people of Hawaii. Yeah, thanks. Thank yeah. Thank you. Uh, mahalo to our wonderful guest, D. Morikawa, a representative in the Hawaii State Legislature. Mahalo to the viewers on Think Tank Hawaii. If you like the Think Tank free media shows, please help support this nonprofit platform. Aloha, ahui ho, malama kono. Thank you so much for watching Think Tech Hawaii. If you like what we do, please like us and click the subscribe button on YouTube and the follow button on Vimeo. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and LinkedIn, and donate to us at thinktechhawaii.com. Mahalo.